The Community Memorial Health System Speaker Series Online is brought to you by Mission Home Health. Mission Home Health and Hospice is committed to taking care of people by providing the highest quality, cost-effective care wherever the patient calls home. With over 14 locations, Mission delivers skilled home health, hospice, and palliative care services to more than 3,000 patients a day. As a preferred partner with several health systems, Mission works with providers to customize each partnership to provide exceptional coordinated care. Visit our website to learn more at www.homewithmission.com. We take care of people and one call does it all. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm Megan Rodardi, Director of Maternal and Children's Health Services here at Community Memorial Hospital. And I'm Sheila Dietrich. I'm the manager of the New Parent Resource Center here at Community Memorial. Tonight, we're here to discuss how Community Memorial Health System can support you and your family throughout your parenting journey. We're going to take you on a virtual tour of our hospital and share with you what you can expect when it's your time to deliver your new baby. Throughout our presentation, you will have the ability for a question and answer session. So we do encourage you to submit your questions in the Q&A box. To get things started, we have a presentation we'd like to share. Megan. Uh, my name is Megan again and I graduated from UCLA with my bachelor's in science of nursing in 1992. So I've been a registered nurse for 30 years. Can you believe that Sheila? Well I can because I've been a registered nurse for 43 years. Wow. And I have been here at CMH since 1999 and the director of maternal and children's health services for 15 years. I spent the majority of my direct care nursing career in labor and delivery. And now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about our philosophy of care, beginning with our baby-friendly hospital designation. So simply put, a ba uh, the designation of baby-friendly means that we are a center of excellence for breastfeeding and mother-infant bonding. Uh, at CMH, we respect your feeding choices, and part of the baby-friendly experience is for us to meet your feeding goals. So whatever those goals may be, we're here to, to meet your goals. We, it also is so that if you desire and choose to breastfeed, that our hospital practices and policies are set up to give you the best chance at being successful at breastfeeding. The Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative is a global program that was created and sponsored by WHO and UNICEF to recognize hospitals and birth centers that offer the optimal levels of care for infant feeding and mother-baby bonding. So why should you breastfeed? It's good for babies, it's good for mothers, it's good for the community, and it's also good for the planet. So there's advantages specifically for babies. Babies who breastfeed have a lower risk of asthma, obesity, type 1 diabetes, severe lower respiratory disease, inner ear infections, sudden infant death syndrome, gastrointestinal infections, and a condition that's very um, risky for new premature babies, which is necrotizing enterocolitis. There's also advantages for mothers. Mothers that breastfeed have a lower risk of breast cancer, ovarian cancer, type two diabetes, high blood pressure, and also a possibility that it decreases the chance of postpartum depression. So there's advantages also for the community and the environment. Um, it has been determined that if 90% of mothers would breastfeed exclusively for the first six months, the United States would save $13 billion annually and prevent an excess of 911 deaths every year. More breastfeeding means less pollution as well because when you um, have all the formula and the bottle feeding that creates um, a lot of pollution from raising dairy cattle, transporting milk, manufacturing formula, transporting formula, plastic waste, et cetera. So the American Academy of Pediatrics, we follow their recommendations and they believe that breastfeeding is the optimal source of nutrition for an infant for the first year of life. 
Uh, they recommend that we exclusively breastfeed for the first six months of a baby's life and then gradually add solid foods while continuing to breastfeed the baby for through its first year. Um, thereafter, breastfeeding can be continued as long as it's uh, mutually desired by both mother and baby. So the importance of exclusive uh, breastfeeding in the first um, six months of life, that, uh, excuse me, uh, exclusive breastfeeding means feeding only breast milk and not any other foods or liquids, including formula or water except for medications, vitamins, mineral supplements as recommended by your physician. Uh, exclusive breastfed infants tend to breastfeed longer. Uh, moms tend to make more milk for their babies if you're exclusively breastfeeding versus introducing some formula. And babies have better immune protection from illnesses based on the, the gut and the protection that breastfeeding offers to the baby's gut. And also better protection for respiratory infections as well. True. Thanks, Sheila. <clears throat> so baby friendly consists of 10 steps to successful breastfeeding. And the 10 steps are the broad framework that guides the baby friendly hospital initiative. Uh, they were developed by the team of global experts as we described, the WHO and UNICEF. And they consist of evidence-based practices that have been shown to increase breastfeeding initiation and duration. So the, these are the 10 steps. We'll go over them real quickly. Step one is that we comply fully with the International Code of, Breast Market, Code of Market of Breastfeeding Substitutes, that's a mouthful, and relevant World Health Assembly resolutions. And what that is talking about is that we do not provide, for instance, free gift bags with formula within it at the time of discharge. We don't have any advertisements for formula and we keep formula out of view. Um, we have a written infant feeding policy that is routinely communicated to our physicians, our staff, our nurses, um, and we establish um, ongoing monitoring and data management systems, meaning that we check and make sure that what we're doing is actually meeting the goals of, of our, our moms and the, what their feeding goals are for their infants. So we, we look at a cadre of, of measures to ensure that we're getting this right. Um, the second step is, is about education and training and um, making sure that our staff have sufficient knowledge, competence, and skills to support breastfeeding. So our, all of our maternal child health nurses receive 20 hours of breastfeeding education, 15 hours of didactic, and five hours of competency training. Um, and there is also ongoing breastfeeding beyond that, but that's the baseline for everybody. Um, and also our, all of our hospital staff may get breastfeeding education that would be relevant to their role in the hospital, such as dietitians, um, housekeepers, if they're in the room and they, they ask for advice, what do they do, who do they get to answer those questions. Um, our, uh, every, everybody, I can't even, what other groups? Well, if, if a mother comes in to a different part of the hospital after her baby is born and she's breastfeeding, we have an entire system set up, which is wonderful, so that that mom can continue to meet her feeding goals while she might be hospitalized with, say, a surgery right. or something like that. So it's important that all hospital staff have a knowledge of where do we get the help that we need for a breastfeeding mm -hmm. mom coming in. What are the resources and where, where can they um, get the, the questions or, or the answers for the patients? Um, also, our, all of our providers, which is our physicians who are um, mother or infant caring for mothers or infants, they also receive education um, that's required for them as well. So we all are on the same page. Also, our educators at our clinics, um, our health educators also receive specific baby-friendly breastfeeding training. So step three, oops, I'm sorry, whoops, a little technical <laughs> thing with us, thank you. Um, so step three is about discussing the importance and management of breastfeeding with pregnant women and their families. So we do that through our childbirth classes, our Center for Family Health education, education is provided at our clinics. Um, so we make sure that we educate also when our patients are admitted to the hospital about the benefits of breastfeeding and <clears throat> why we support it so strongly. 
Um, step four, we uh, facilitate an immediate and uninterrupted skin-to-skin -skin contact and support mothers to initiate breastfeeding as soon as possible after birth. Of course, in the cesarean section, we also do skin-to-skin, -skin, um, but then we transfer the mom to recovery room where we continue the skin-to-skin -skin and start the breastfeeding. At a vaginal birth, the baby is, is typically delivered directly to the mom's chest, and we begin the skin-to-skin -skin and, and get the baby latched on as, as soon as possible. And Megan, I'm sure that in your career, maybe early on, I know certainly in mine, minute the baby was born, it was basically removed. Yes, it was, it was taken, taken to a different room. Put in the warmer, wrapped up, swaddled, not skin to skin. No. But we have learned so much about skin to skin and the benefits of skin to skin between moms and babies. And even if you're not breastfeeding, we still do know about all of the benefits of mom and baby being in skin to skin contact. So we offer that to all of our patients and encourage that. And what's absolutely amazing is that it helps regulate the baby's temperature helps regulate the baby's blood sugar. And as Megan said, whether you're breastfeeding or not. So babies who are put skin to skin actually don't need as many interventions in making that transition from the yeah. womb to yeah. being outside the womb. Yeah. And it also really promotes breastfeeding because there's no disconnect. The baby doesn't go into a state of stress and then we want him to go on to the breast or feed from a bottle. So there's huge benefits. And many people ask, why is my baby's going where? It's gonna be on me, naked? And that's the reason. Yep. So. Um, the fifth step of our baby friendly uh, 10 steps is supporting moms <clears throat> to initiate and maintain breastfeeding and manage common difficulties. So we do that in the hospital by having um, all of our nurses trained to support lactation and um, offering lots of education support. Mm -hmm. And the sixth step is not to provide our ba babies who are exclusively breastfeeding to any foods or fluids other than breast milk unless it's medically indicated. And that's something that we get questions about. Um, why don't you want my baby to have other food? Well, we know that there's a lot of studies that have been done that show when a baby exclusively breastfeeds, mom has a better milk supply. And what we mean by better is, is the amount she needs for her baby. And uh, babies uh, become better nursers also when they've had that opportunity to exclusively breastfeed. And step seven is enabling mothers and their infants to remain together to practice rooming in for 24 hours a day. That is something that, that, that uh, has been, it was a struggle in the beginning, and now I think the community and our patients understand and accept that, and we do that so that moms can learn baby's feeding cues, and there's, we're able to again have that, that connection between mom and baby where mom can, and, and they can learn each other and uh, start figuring out how to do this. Absolutely, and we mentioned already how babies used to be kept in a separate room, the nursery, and they found that babies maybe got a couple of breastfeedings in. And the reason was baby came out according to a hospital schedule. Right. So baby might be coming out to mom and not even be hungry, be sleepy. And then baby would go back to nursery and maybe baby was hungry. So baby was given a bottle and never had opportunity to learn how to breastfeed. So step seven is there so that, as Megan said, moms can learn their baby's feeding cues and the baby may go to breast repeatedly over and over again uh, to learn how to breastfeed. But we've sure learned a lot about those schedules that we used to have babies on and how they're not the optimal way to feed your baby. We feed baby based on feeding cues and that's step eight, that we support moms to recognize and respond to infant's cues for feeding. Uh, crying is actually a late cue, so there's things that we will teach our moms about how to know when is my baby ready to feed. You do better than that, than I do. So step nine is to counsel moms about the benefits of not providing a bottle when they are intending to exclusively breastfeed or artificial nipples, pacifiers. Um, yeah, and the reason for that is that babies are learning what we call muscle memory 
of how to move their mouth to get their, their food. And the muscles work a little bit differently when they're on the breast compared to when they're on a bottle. Now I've had some babies that could make a nipple out of a wall. They will, <laughs> they'll go back and forth. But there are a lot of babies that once they get that hard artificial nipple, it makes it more difficult for them to breastfeed. Now a second reason that we don't encourage pacifiers is that when babies are showing feeding cues, as Megan was mentioning, that means I need to eat. I need to, I need to get some milk here. So a baby who's given a pacifier when they should be eating, and we're talking about in the first month of life when milk supply is being established, that baby may not get the milk that they need. So that's the reason why we encourage you to not bring a pacifier to the hospital and why we also don't have them in the hospital. That's correct. Um, thank you, Sheila. Step 10 is about coordinating discharge so parents and their infants have timely access to ongoing support and care. That's why at the time of discharge, we refer all of our moms over to our new parent resource center where we offer a cadre of feeding uh, advice and support. And I'm gonna have Sheila uh, go on and tell you all of the things that we offer at the new parent resource center. Thank you, Megan. So again, my name is Sheila Diedrich. I, as, as we've already noted, I've been a registered nurse for over 30 or 43 years. I do have my master's degree as well as my bachelor's degree, both in nursing. My master's is in nursing education. And um, I am the, the manager at the New Parent Resource Center. I am also a board certified lactation consultant. And uh, what that is, is um, it's, you have to sit for boards, you have to have a certain level of experience and education. And it's the highest level of, of nursing certification you can get in terms of breastfeeding. Uh, the, um, the, so I will move on and talk some more. So we're going to start with all everything we offer before your baby is born. And what we love to say about Community Memorial is that we are there for you. We are there for you from the time you're ready to take those childbirth classes to after your baby is born and up through your child's first year of life. So our pregnancy classes that we offer, um, when COVID hit, we understood and we needed to offer virtual classes in lieu of in-person. And we still have that option available for you. All of our prepared childbirth classes are designed to help you to prepare for the birth of your baby. And sometimes we get questions, well, you know, is it, is it only about the birth? And, it, and no, it isn't. We call it prepared childbirth because it's all about what's going on with you, your pregnancy, your nutrition. What about when I go into labor? What do I do? How do I know when to go to the hospital? What are all the things that I can do to make my birth experience as comfortable for me and, and, and myself, you know, myself, my baby, my partner as possible? So um, we have something really unique too, which Megan, would you like to tell them about the, the, the labor support program? while we're talking about oh, this. Oh, and in the hospital, we have a group of nurses that are on a committee or a task force that they, they, they're they called the Labor Support Committee and they work on um, providing mom with the best labor experience. We have had a class on something called Spinning Babies. We They look at all of the, the different labor support techniques and tools. A lot of education is provided through that group also we have certain things in labor and delivery that you are able to use. We have some little um, candles that are not real flame, but um, electric candles. We have tennis balls. We have birthing balls. We have th something called peanut balls. Um, we have aromatherapy. So we have a lot of um, tools to help support you through your labor process. And it's a, it's a really dynamic team and I'm excited to um, have them. They're, they're awesome. And when you mention spinning babies, I have this idea of like bicycling. Um, but spinning babies is so very important because the baby getting turned in in an optimal position for delivery is what that's all about. Yeah, how do you turn the baby by the mom's position? So we get moms into certain positions to help the baby rotate and navigate through the pelvis. So I, again, I, I interrupted our virtual prepared childbirth class a little bit, I'm sorry. 
Um, but it is designed, obviously, when you go into the unknown, uh, fear is an, an expectation. And so it's designed to make you less fearful, have a lot of trust in your body. Your body knows what it's doing. And it also gives you information for those who want to have pain management um, or unexpected labor situations. We also talk about all about the newborn. What, what does the baby look like? What does it do? What do we do? Um, when baby is delivered. And then, of course, we do talk about breastfeeding. So the cost for the six-week class, and it's two hours, um, two hours a night for a total of 12 hours of education, is $125 per couple. And pre-registration is required, and because it is virtual, we do have it on Microsoft Teams. Uh, we just started this back, and we're so excited yes. because we were not offering an in-person prepared childbirth class, and um, and now we have that alternative, as I mentioned, of the virtual. But for those of you who would like to do the in-person, we have what was very popular previously, which is our weekend class. And our weekend class, in lieu of the two hours every week, you come all day Saturday with a break for lunch, and then half day Sunday. And it's the same amount of hours of education, the same cost, and you also uh, do pre-register for the class uh, by calling the New Parent Resource Center. So all everything that you would learn in the, the six-week course is the same. Quick course, mm -hmm. crash yeah. course. And for some people, it's really helpful that they don't um, that they don't have a commitment once a week. They come one weekend, but it doesn't mean that the that you're getting less education. You're getting all the same curriculum. Everything is the same. It's just. just all day Saturday, half day Sunday, all right? Um, last time we did this speaker series, we were really excited that we said in 2022, we we're gonna be offering hypnobirthing. And guess what, now we have it. And it has become wildly popular. In fact, it fills up. And we didn't know uh, how popular it was gonna be, but, but we're really excited to say that it is. Um, the instructor that teaches it is a hypnobirthing, certified hypnobirthing educator. And you might ask yourself, well, how is this different? Well, hypnobirthing has um, a little bit different philosophy um, in that it's a, a really a trusting, trusting, trusting of your body um, above and beyond. And part of that is you actually do some self-hypnosis. Now, that sounds like kind of woohoo out there, but um, I'm also a certified hypnobirthing educator, and I can tell you that it is absolutely magnificent. We basically do have an altered state that we're not always conscious of, and one of the things I learned in class was, have you ever been on that car ride? And you got in your car, and you knew where you were going, and the next thing you knew, you were there. <laughs> And you're like, I don't even remember getting here. Well, that's the type of state that, that we help you to get in. So um, this class is a two and a half hour class, and there's only five sessions. It's also limited on the number of participants. Now our other classes are as well, but that's limited to 10. This one is limited to five. And based on where we're holding the, the class, right? Now, actually, hypnobirthing is always limited to five. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. And for the reason that because of the extreme interaction and state that, that we're getting people right. in, um, the suggestion through Hypnobirthing International is that... Five couples. Five couples. And, and by the way, hypnobirthing is international. Believe it or not, it is taught all over the world, and so. And I would say, Sheila, it's a lot about empowering women to trust their bodies. Absolutely, and which we, we we also do in our prepared childbirth class. But this takes it that step further. Um, we do lots of affirmations, and again, the, the right up my alley. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> wonderful. Um, and then the other class that is wildly popular is prenatal yoga. And that's I, right up my alley as well. Yeah, yoga. I mean, who doesn't love yoga? Well, maybe some people, but I think most people <laughs> do. And the educator that teaches that, she's certified in, in prenatal yoga. And she knows how to get you in those positions to ease any of those. You know, we get lots of hip discomfort, back discomfort. And also, it helps to get the baby, in, again, in the right position for birth. So um, that class is uh, $10 per class. Uh, Pre-registration is required, class size is limited. We do offer that over at our fitness center rather than at the New Parent Resource. 
And so that's what we offer before your baby's born. Now let's talk about after your baby's born. There's all right. A lot to offer there as well. Yes. So our babies ourselves is a curriculum of eight classes. You come once a week and they're an hour and a half long. And as you can see here, we start off with where is your baby and how does that, how does that affect you? So you can read um, on the topics there. Um, just, I'll just kind of say like babies crying and calming. We give a class on that. But on that same class, we also talk about mommy emotions. Mommy emotions are very important. Uh, what about baby sleep and then what about parent sleep? So you can, I won't read them all, but, but you can see that class always fills up as well. A lot of good information there. About, and you know what I love? I took one of these classes when I was a, a new mom and I met people that were in the same stage of life that I am in. Some of these ladies are still my friends today. Our children are 27 years old, the oldest <laughs> one. And um, I am still friends with some of the women that I met in this group. And it was so... Um, comforting to, to be able to share with other moms the experiences I was having and to, to check in, in on, has your baby do this? Mine's been doing this and just get some in, um, encouragement and support from, from women. And it, I highly recommend these classes. And, and what Megan mentioned, I would say besides the topics, the beginning of the class is always question and answer. And that's what Megan's talking about. You know, somebody might say, you know, my baby's doing this or that. And then I'll say, how many other moms are experiencing this or parents? Because dads are welcome as well. And we do have dads come. And grandparents. And, and, and they'll, they'll raise their hand. Um, so um, it normalizes. It just normalizes for you. And that connection Megan was talking about is fantastic. Um, it's just absolutely wonderful. And you will, she's right, you will have friends for life. So, alrighty. And then um, our breastfeeding support group is currently virtual. And the reason is we still are limited on sizes of how many people we can get in a room. But um, all you do is call us um, and we get your email address and we give you an invite through Microsoft Teams. There's absolutely no charge. No registration is needed for that. Either. Well, there is registration only oh, because is. we do need oh, your email we've got address. To get that link. Yeah, otherwise we wouldn't know where to send the True. invite to. So, all right. Oh, and, and I forgot to mention. Um, so the everybody that works at the New Parent Resource Center that sees um, new parents. Um, they are all board certified lactation consultants. So including the the nurse who runs the group for breastfeeding support group. So, uh, Well Mama. Well, well Mama is virtual for the same reason I mentioned, because it is a, a, um, a group we don't know if, you know, if we're going to have 20. And uh, spacing is important right now because we still have limited spacing. Uh, but this is really exciting because there aren't a lot of places that moms can go to get that emotional support. A lot of them do get it through our babies ourselves, but in terms of specific emotional support, group. Um, one, of, one of our um, psychologists here at the hospital actually is the one who does this group and it is very popular as well. I Same believe thing. isn't it one in seven moms experience some sort of postpartum mood disorder anywhere from you know mild to so this is a very um, important group to be able to offer to moms that are in need of, of some additional emotional support. And I think it I think the number may have changed. It might be one in five now. Because you know when COVID hit, oh, numbers true. kept kept um, increasing. When you are a new mother, a new parent, it can be very isolating. And so um, we want to make sure that we have uh, giving you all the support that, that you need. And connections to other people. It's so important. All righty. And then um, one of our, our crown jewels <laughs> is the lactation consultations that we do privately. And uh, currently, if you deliver at Community Memorial, you get to have this service with an uh, international board certified lactation consultant um, at no cost, which is it's something unheard of. So um, we just want you to know that, that you have that available to you. If uh, you do not deliver your baby here at Community Memorial, um, we still offer that service, but there is a fee for it. 
Pretty so, nominal compared to very what nominal other people fee. Are offered Absolutely, charging for the same service. So because it is. Um, because we do spend so much time with you, at least an hour or around an hour per consultation, it is by appointment. And uh, that, we are, we, we just do thousands of those every year, so. Alrighty, I wanted to uh, mention, uh, you might be wondering, well, why would I need to come in? Well, if you're having some sore nipples or painful nursing, that may or may not be normal. Um, if you're actually having nipple trauma, meaning scabbing, cracking, bleeding, that is not normal. So um, we we can help you a lot with that. Um, a lot of times it's it's the, the latching issues and um, some moms have a low milk supply and they don't know why and we're like little investigators. We, <laughs> we get to the source of it. Um, some moms, believe it or not, have an oversupply and that can be a little problematic for its own reasons. Um, forceful milk let down their babies are having a hard time handling all the milk um, engorgement which is a lot of swelling um, and those are the mother issues infant issues uh, baby maybe isn't gaining the way we think baby should or baby's not being able to latch um, suspected tongue or lip ties uh, baby's extremely fussy and pulling away uh, these are just some of the reasons that you might want to call and make a personal appointment yeah, I know that a lot of people struggle with breastfeeding issues and they might quit breastfeeding or have a bad experience with it, um, have pain that, that's not necessary. So right. we really want to be able to support and provide these, this level of support so that you can continue to breastfeed if that's your goal. And what Megan said is so true. And if they're not getting support from friends or family members, then they're more likely to give up. And we love it when the partner comes um, or if grandma comes. Uh, we can only take two people um, at a time. And the same thing I wanted to say with part babies ourselves, you can bring one person with you only because of our space issue right now. But what we love about them bringing a support person is that they are understanding and they are then supportive to help mom um, to, to meet her feeding goals. You know, and the other thing is it can be educational for those folks as well, the, mm -hmm. the, the grandma or the husband. Sometimes, you know, best intentions um, and sharing knowledge may not be the most current evidence-based information. So we want to help educate them too so that they can provide the appropriate and proper support to, to the breastfeeding yeah. mom. And I always, I always like to say that when moms are getting advice from others, it is always well-intentioned. It just may not be accurate. <laughs> so um, that's what we're here for, to help support you, support your family, help you make reach your feeding goals. And that's one of the things we always ask when, when parents come in, is what is your goal? What would you like to accomplish? And then we set our plan based on, on the individual goal. Uh, we, when you do come in, um, again, we ask what your concern is, what your goals are. We do take a complete history on you, and the reason that we do that is as board certified lactation consultants, we're looking at everything medically of why this may be going on. And we do a physical assessment of both you and your baby um, in terms of um, we're assessing um, your, your breasts and um, you know what things are looking like. Um, and so we can give you a good idea of what, what we're finding. Uh, we, we typically weigh the baby and we evaluate the feeding and sometimes we do what's called a test weight and that's where we can see exactly how much a baby's taking in which you can only do with a gram weight scale sometimes um, people will think if they have a pound and ounce scale they can tell <laughs> how much baby's bringing in but they're just not accurate enough um, and then we develop a written plan for you so when you go home you have not only the knowledge that we gave you and your partner but you also have it in writing so you can refer back to it and with the thought of call us, call us if you need us again, okay? Alrighty, um, we have a little what we call breastfeeding boutique. We have some bras and all the different pump parts and um, we also uh, uh, rent professional grade pumps for those moms who need a professional and grade pump. And how about pump. those really cute little shirts we have that say, Oh yeah. 
Uh, I eat at mom's. mom's. <laughs> and there's, what's the other one say? Oh, 100% very, breast milk or, or something. something. Yeah. They're very cute. So yeah. we have a couple little, little baby shirts <laughs> for $5. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. And this is our address. Uh, we are not in the hospital. Um, we are in our own separate location. And for those of you who are familiar with Ventura, uh, we're in our where Loma Vista intersects Main Street at the angle where Main, Main Street angles in, um, you see a professional building. Uh, we're across Catherine Street from, um, from AutoZone. And so we're at 2580 East Main Street. And there's a big sign there that says... New Parent Resource Center. Right, right. <laughs> And I want to get a picture out there someday. <laughs> we should be standing there, Megan. <laughs> All righty. And any questions? Megan. Well, the first question has come in now. And the question is, is skin to skin offered for the fathers? Absolutely. In fact, uh, there are times when mom's not available for one reason or another. And in that case, we absolutely um, get the father immediately doing skin to skin as we would the mother but even in lieu of the mom being there and doing the skin to skin initially and, and the recommendation is that mom does skin to skin until the first feeding which can be a bottle feeding if that's the choice of the mother or a breastfeeding um, so we would if the mom and the dad, and dad were both present we would like the mom to, to do that and complete that first feeding and then absolutely the skin to skin with dad is, is wonderful as well and again we would do that initial skin to skin with dad if, if mom was not available for one reason or another and I think that's where it really comes in is if mom say <laughs> left mom did have a cesarean section and um, she was with the baby initially but then not the entire time but not, it isn't always capable that dad or partner, whoever her partner is, is able to do the, the skin to skin. Yeah. So, all right. Even in the NICU, sometimes we have dads in yeah. there doing skin to skin. So yeah. It's awesome. And it's, it's actually really heartwarming. <laughs> Super. <laughs> <laughs> um, can anyone attend the classes at the New Parent Resource Center? Absolutely. Um, we we um, have people come actually, and including, as I mentioned, our consultations, we have people coming all the way from Los Angeles and up through Santa Barbara that come and attend what we have to offer there. Yeah, so if you're living here and you're planning on delivering somewhere else, then that's fine that you would attend our classes and all of our services are, are open to, to everybody. Um, there's a question about, do I need to select a pediatrician prior to birth? And that is definitely the recommendation. Selecting a pediatrician prior to birth is really important so that when your baby's born, we have a provider to call and to be able to, to give the information and get the orders that we need. So it, it is really uh, very important that you select your pediatrician prior to the birth. And if for whatever reason the birth happens early or something like that, we do have a, an assigned pediatrician on call for people who haven't selected one. But um, it's always better if you select the person. And, and we also recommend that you go potentially and, and have a, um, a meeting. I mean, you can get recommendations from your friends and all of that. But sometimes a friend might connect with a pediatrician, but you might not. So a lot of these pediatricians will do consultations with you or meet with you prior to the birth so you can go get, learn about their philosophy philosophy and about how they're going to be able to support you and your newborn after birth. So yes, we, we very much recommend that you select your pediatrician prior to coming to the hospital to give birth. All right. Do you offer classes in Spanish? At the New Parent Resource Center, we do not have classes in Spanish. However, CMH does through our Centers for Family Health. They have prepared childbirth classes and other classes in Spanish. So. You can t always take advantage of that. Uh, and I did want to mention on that question too, we we did for a while have breastfeeding support group in Spanish, but we didn't have it in attendance. And so we realized that um, that it wasn't needed at the New Parent Resource Center. Um, at that time. At that so time, something yeah. Always able to reconsider at any time that it feels like it is needed. Um, there's another question coming in that says, how long do I have to labor before medical interventions are introduced? You know, there is no hard and fast rule at all about that. It, medical interventions only come in as needed. We don't just automatically really do anything to anybody other than get um, <clears throat> the fetal monitor on 
we really like to get at like a 20 minute strip so that we can see how the baby's doing in the initial part of labor. But we very much encourage getting up and moving. We have telemetry monitors, so we can put you on a telemetry monitor. We also have something called the Monica Novi that is a kind of a Bluetooth monitor, so we can still watch your baby. Um, and we do intermittent um, auscultation also where we listen um, if that's what's preferred. So. Um, yeah, there's no really set time. Again, everything, and, and your doctor should be discussing any interventions that they're gonna do with you um, prior to, to instituting them. And unless, of course, we have an emergency, which is a different thing, we're still gonna tell you what we're doing, but um, maybe not as long and lengthy of a discussion. But um, we really try to minimize medical interventions um, unless they're really needed. All righty. Where can I find a class schedule? Well, it's so exciting because we have mycmhbaby.org and if you go on there you're going to scroll down where it says new parent resource center all right and now megan i believe we have a maternity tour video to watch we do so we'd like you to see our um, we had to make a change again based on the current situation so that our, our tour is now virtual. And with that virtual tour, you get to see areas that you might not have been able to see when we had the tour in person. So we think it actually is a, a little bit better than, than coming in. You can see more and you can do it at the convenience of, in your own home and on your own time. So here is the tour of our you maternal don't. child health unit. Welcome to Community Memorial Hospital. We are excited to show you around our hospital and share what you can expect when it's time to deliver your new baby. From pregnancy to parenting, Community Memorial Health System is here to support your unique journey as a family. At the conclusion of this video, we encourage you to visit mycmhbaby.org for more valuable information to help you prepare for your birth experience and to explore all the resources available to you. That's mycmhbaby.org. To streamline admitting when it's time to deliver your baby, we ask that expectant mothers complete our hospital pre-admission process at least one month prior to their due date. You can stop by the admitting office to provide your personal information, or you can start the process at mycmhbaby.org. If you think you are in labor, the first step is to call your doctor. He or she will tell you if it's time to come to the hospital. You should also call your doctor if your water breaks, if you have contractions that have been five minutes apart for an hour, or for any other concerns. When you arrive at the hospital to deliver your baby, you can pull up to the front door of the hospital and let the mom-to-be out of the car prior to parking. During busy weekday hours, the CMH valet is available to park your car. In the evenings and on weekends, or if you prefer to park your car yourself, please use the parking structure in front of the hospital. Be sure to adhere to all posted signage and time restrictions. The main entrance to CMH is open during daytime hours, and the emergency room entrance is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Anytime you come to the hospital during the pregnancy and when you arrive to deliver your baby, if you are arriving to the hospital during daytime hours, you will come directly to the third floor, labor and delivery unit. And if you are arriving at night, please stop at the emergency room admitting desk and check in before coming to the labor and delivery. Our labor and delivery department is located on the third floor of the hospital. When you get to the door, use the phone on the wall to talk to one of our nurses. They will open the door for you. When you arrive at the labor and delivery department, your nurse will evaluate your condition, assess how your labor is progressing, and discuss the situation with your doctor. If you are in very early labor, we may send you home and ask you to return when you're further along. We encourage you to have a support person with you in labor and delivery. Other visitors are normally allowed provided that the environment remains safe, we have enough space to provide the needed care, and as long as visitors are supporting you and your birthing experience, However, we ask that you not bring visitors other than your support person until you know you are going to stay. As your due date approaches, please visit mycmhbaby.org to check our most up-to-date visitor policy. Labor. Once the decision has been made that you will stay in the hospital and things are progressing normally, you can get up and walk in your room or the hall, sit in a rocking chair or on a birthing ball, or take a shower. If you'd like to take a bath during labor, ask for a room with a bathtub when you check in and we will do our best to accommodate your request. If you need an IV during labor, your nurse will explain why it's necessary. You may discuss getting pain medication or an epidural or other desires for your labor and delivery experience with your labor and delivery nurse, your midwife, or your doctor. 
Educational videos about labor and delivery are also available on the TV in your room. You can bring a camera to take photos and videotape before and after delivery. However, you may not videotape during the delivery. Delivery. When your baby is born, the umbilical cord will be clamped and cut. Your support person may help cut the cord if he or she wishes to, and the medical staff determines it is safe. Your baby will be placed skin to skin on your chest for you to see and hold. Putting your baby skin to skin on your chest will help your baby's vital signs and blood sugar stabilize, calm your baby, and help support breastfeeding. After your baby is born, a nurse will examine your baby and notify your designated pediatrician that he or she has arrived. An antibiotic ointment will be applied to your baby's eyes to help protect them from germs, and a vitamin K injection will be administered to support blood clotting. After a couple hours of recovering, you and your baby will be transported to your postpartum room together. Your baby will have a bassinet. The bassinet drawer will contain diapers, wipes, and blankets for the baby. Cesarean sections are performed in special operating rooms located in the labor and delivery department. Your support person may attend the cesarean section, but no other visitors will be allowed in the operating or recovery rooms. In the rare case of an emergency cesarean section, your support person will not be allowed into the operating room. If you and your baby are well at the time of cesarean delivery and the obstetrician and anesthesiologist approve, your baby may be put skin to skin on your chest after delivery. After some time, a nurse will take your baby and support person to the recovery room. When you arrive in the recovery room, your baby may be placed on your chest again while you are recovering. You will be in the recovery room with your baby and support person for about two hours after the cesarean section. And then the three of you will be transported to your postpartum room. If your baby needs extra attention or care after delivery, your baby may be taken to the neonatal intensive care unit or NICU, also located on the third floor. Parents may visit the NICU 24 hours a day. The NICU does a great job of taking care of babies that need extra attention after birth. If your baby needs this type of care, you will be provided with all of the necessary information and a social worker will be assigned to assist you throughout your baby's stay. Postpartum rooms are also located on the third floor. Your baby will room in with you, which means your baby will stay in your postpartum room until you are both discharged. Keeping your baby with you encourages successful breastfeeding and enables you to become comfortable in your new parenting role. If you need any assistance with your baby, your nurse is there to help. Vaginal delivery patients generally go home one or two days after a baby is born, and cesarean section patients generally go home two to four days after a baby is born. Postpartum. Your postpartum room bed will have a call light and TV and lighting controls. Please use your call light to ask for assistance to the bathroom, for pain medication, or any other needs. Educational videos about moms and babies are available on the TV in your room and are accessible using your bed's remote. We encourage your support person to stay with you throughout your hospitalization. There will be a sofa that folds out into a bed for your support person to sleep. For all other visitors, please visit mycmhbaby.org to check our most up-to-date visitor policy. Safety. Your baby will have two ID bands and one alarm band. You and your support person will each have an ID band that matches your baby's. The ID bands will all have the last name that the mother is admitted under. The alarm band will set off the alarm if someone tries to remove the band or if your baby gets too close to a hospital exit. If any of the bands need to be adjusted, please let your nurse know. If anyone comes to your room to take your baby for a test, please make sure they are wearing a hospital name tag with their photo and name. Only maternity staff wearing a unique hospital name tag and special color of uniform, the maternity staff, should take your baby from your room. If we take your baby out of your room, your support person can come along with us. If you have any questions, ask to speak with your nurse before allowing anyone unfamiliar into your room or to take your baby. If you walk in the hall with your baby, he or she must ride in the bassinet, not in your arms. Postpartum folder. In your postpartum room, you will find a folder containing the following papers you will need to read and fill out. Souvenir birth certificate form, legal birth certificate form, social security form, California state newborn screening pamphlet, hearing screen information, hepatitis B vaccine information sheet, baby photograph information, breastfeeding education, Several people will come by your room the morning after the baby is born to pick up forms and answer questions. 
please have the forms filled out as soon as possible after delivery. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner will be brought to you in your postpartum room. You will be given a menu to choose the food you would like to eat. Your support person can purchase food in the Brent Street Cafe, located on the first floor of the hospital. CMH also has gourmet meals if you'd like to order one in celebration of your new baby. Ask your nurse for this special menu. Feeding your baby. As a baby-friendly designated hospital, CMH encourages and supports exclusive breastfeeding, and our nurses are trained to provide breastfeeding assistance during your stay. At the same time, we are committed to supporting each individual's parents' feeding decisions for their baby. Please don't hesitate to ask for help as needed. We also encourage you to make an appointment at our new Parent Resource Center after delivery for any additional breastfeeding assistance you may need. Visit mycmhbaby.org for details on the resources available at the new Parent Resource Center. What to bring. CMH provides hospital gowns, pads, and underwear for you to wear during your stay, but you may bring some of your own belongings as well. Visit mycmhbaby.org for a list of suggested items to bring from home. Diapers, wipes, and blankets for your baby are also provided during your stay, but you will need to bring clothes and a blanket for the baby to go home in. You will need a car seat for your baby. The car seat should be new, or you should be sure that it has not been in an accident and it has not reached the expiration date listed on it. We highly recommend you have assistance with your car seat installation by the California Highway Patrol. Many fire stations also install car seats. Visit mycmhbaby.org for a list of phone numbers. Please call to make an appointment. Car seat installations are free of charge. Please label any belongings you bring to the hospital with your name. Do not bring valuables to the hospital. On the morning of your discharge, please ask your support person to take all your belongings to your car. Please double check that nothing is left behind. Feel free to take the disposable supplies from your room, such as diapers and wipes, but leave the linens, blankets, and baby t-shirts in the room. If you had a cesarean section or are still unsteady on your feet, you will ride out of the hospital in a wheelchair. In this case, your baby's car seat can be waiting in the car and you will carry your baby in your arms while sitting in the wheelchair. If you did not have a cesarean section and you and your nurse both feel that you are steady on your feet, you may walk out of the hospital. In this case, your support person will carry your baby in his or her car seat. We know that bringing home a new baby is exciting, but can also be a challenging time for you and your family. We're here to help. The Community Memorial Health System New Parent Resource Center is available to answer any questions you may have and offers a variety of resources, including prepared childbirth classes, prenatal yoga, support groups, private lactation consultations, and new parent classes. Breastfeeding may come with some unexpected challenges. Our team of registered nurses, who are also international board-certified lactation consultants, are here to provide support and education to help you meet your personal goals. We offer private, in-person, and virtual lactation consultations in a warm, caring, nurturing environment. In addition, we offer breast pump rentals and a breastfeeding boutique with items to meet all of your breastfeeding needs. Visit mycmhbaby.org or call 805-948-BABY for more information. Thank you for choosing Community Memorial Hospital for the delivery and care of your baby. Giving birth is one of the most meaningful and memorable times you and your family will ever experience, and we are honored to be a part of your journey. <laughs>It looks like we have a few more questions coming in. So the first one is, are there limitations on the number of visitors or support personnel? And at this time there are, um, but that is changing frequently and rapidly at this time based on the current situation with the pandemic. So what I'm gonna recommend is that you go to our website and look, because we keep the latest visitor information on the website and we keep it current. So that is where you're gonna find the most current information about visitation. How many and when and who and how it works. All right, next question is, what if I want to breastfeed my baby, but my baby will only breastfeed on one side? Well, sometimes we see this and that's part of our job is to figure out why. I actually have had moms who only had one breast and a baby's nursed on just that breast. The body is miraculous and it will you know, try to make as much milk as it can based on milk removed. 
But when babies only want to nurse on one side, there's a variety of reasons that might be. One of them might be that their baby is uncomfortable with their head turned um, in a position to get on the other side, and that's one of the things we work with. Another reason might be a difference in the milk supply, and that's something that we work with. So um, we figure all that out for you. <laughs> Experts, we're able to help you every step. Um, another question, is there an anesthesiologist available for epidurals 24-7? Absolutely, we have anesthesiology dedicated to OB 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All right. Are there any restrictions on what visitors can bring to the new parents while they're in the hospital? Well, Megan, you might be able to field this question a little bit better than me, but um, we, we're fine with you bringing them in food and um, the, the thing that we um, we ask that you please bring your don't bring your valuables to the hospital we want valuables left at home but the other thing is balloons we don't allow balloons on the third floor for safety reasons so unfortunately that would be something that you could have them bring you at home if you so desire but in the hospital we can't have um, mylar or latex balloons So there's another question here that says, what can someone expect if they decline a C-section after a VBAC? I think probably what the question, decline a C-section after. I think what you're saying is if you decline a C-section while you're trying, while you, if you've had a VBAC and you come in, we do, let me just say this, we offer VBAC. So we do offer the service of VBAC. So if you want to have a, what we call a TOLAC or a trial of labor after cesarean, we offer that service here. Um, so you are, uh, we are ready to, to do that. And we have quite a few VBACs. Uh, do we delay cord clamping? We do. It's a part of our standard process to delay cord clamping with every birth, uh, our cesareans and our vaginal births. Um, you know, of course, always, if there's an emergency, it might change things and we might just strip it a little bit and make it faster, but we do typically, as a part of our standard process, delay cord clamping. Um, next question, can I eat during labor? Yes, we do allow you to eat during labor. Um, up to a certain point, and you're probably not gonna wanna eat much after that. And um, a lot of it is provider driven um, in terms of at what point they want you to stop eating. So what I always recommend to people is that if you have any specific requests for your delivery or your experience, that you would talk to the physician about it while you're um, in the office before you come into labor and um, make sure you have that conversation with them about what your desires are. Also, um, when you get admitted to the hospital, we like you to please let us know your preferences and, and your desires of what you want this experience to be because we wanna meet the, your desires and your goals for your experience. So let us know what it is that you're looking for and we will do our best to accommodate it with always safety in mind first. Um, do you only offer VBAC after one cesarean? So um, we do have criteria and your doctor can, can um, talk to you about this in the office. There, there's um, certain criteria. We have very successful VBAC rate and that is because we have criteria that we that that is makes it um, makes you more likely to be successful and we um, will um, <laughs> we um, what was the question again well if they've had more than one C -section. Oh, so more than one c-section I believe that we do not offer a VBAC um, if you've had more than one cesarean yeah that is on our criteria so um, no but if you've had only one then yes uh, we do offer cord blood banking. That is something, though, that we ask that you bring your kit. If you bring your kit and you let us know that you want to do cord blood banking, we can absolutely facilitate that for you. We're all prepared for that. So, um, yes, we offer that, the ability for you to do cord blood banking. Looks like there's one more question, Megan. Okay. The last question, do you offer gentle cesarean? 
Um, we do offer many, many components of a gentle cesarean. However, my understanding when this term gentle cesarean came up, we looked into it and it has to do with uh, many different things, but one of the things is low lighting in the operating room. And we have enough lighting so that the surgeon can see what they're doing. Um, so we, we don't turn the lights totally down or off and then having um, soft music if you want that that is something that you should again talk to your physician about during the prenatal care visits and then when you get admitted to the hospital just let us know exactly what your desires are and as long as it is safe and um, it's something that we can provide in, in the space and the time that we have we, we're, we're more than happy to try to accommodate any specific needs that you might have or again we want to meet your desires for your birthing experience so we are going to try to accommodate anything that we can thank you so much for joining us this evening we really appreciate you taking the time to learn more about what we can offer you here at community memorial hospital for your unique birthing experience yes thank you have a great evening goodbye